from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering Qualys Security Conference 2019. Brought to you by Qualys. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're in Las Vegas at the Bellagio at the Qualys Security Conference. It's the 19th year they've been doing this. It's our first year here and we're excited to be here. And it's great to have a veteran who's been in this space for so long to give a little bit more of a historical perspective as to what happened in the past and where we are now and what can we look forward to in the future. So coming right off his keynote is Philippe Corteau, the Chairman and CEO of Qualys. Philip, great to see you. Oh, thank you, same, same, same for me. Absolutely, so you touched on so many great um, topics in your conversation about kind of the shifts of, of, of modern computing mm -hmm. from the mainframe to the mini. We've heard it over and over and yeah. over, but the key uh -huh. message was really about architecture. Correct. If you don't have the right mm -hmm. architecture, you can't have the right solution. So how has the evolution of architects, of architectures impacted your ability to deliver security solutions for your clients? So now that's a very good question. And in fact, you know, what happened is that we started in 1999 with a vision that we could use exactly like uh, Salesforce.com, these nascent internet technologies and apply that uh, to security. And, uh, so, and Mark Benioff applied that to essentially changing the way CRM was essentially used and deployed in, in enterprises and with a fantastic success as we know. So for us, the I can say today that 19 years later, the vision was right. It took us significantly longer because the security people were not really uh, warmed at the idea of suddenly uh, having the data in their view, which was in place that they could not control. And the IT people, they didn't really like at all the fact that suddenly they were not in control anymore of the infrastructure. So. We had a lot of resistance. However, we always, I always believe, absolutely believe that the, the cloud will be the cloud architecture to go back. A lot of people make the confusion and that was part of the confusion that for people it was a cloud, that kind of magical thing someplace uh, we, you don't know where. And what I was trying to explain and I've been saying that so many times that we, you need to look at the cloud like, a compute, like an architecture which distribute the computing power far more efficiently than the previous one, which was client-server, which was distributing the computing power far better than, of course, the mainframes and right. the mini computers. And so if you look at their architecture, so the mainframe were essentially big data centers in, uh, in Fort Knox-like uh, settings, uh, private lines of communication to a damn terminal. And of course, security was not really an issue then because its security was built in by the IBMs and company. Same thing with the mini computer, which then was, instead of just providing that computing power to the large, very large company who could afford it, now suddenly the mini computer, through the advance in semiconductor technology, uh, could reduce the footprint and then now bring that computing power to the labs and to the departments. And th that was then the new era of the digital equipment, the prime, the data general, etc. Uh, and then current server came in. So what client server did, again, if you look at the architecture, different architecture, now suddenly servers, the LAN, or the internal network, and the PC. And that was now allowing to distribute the computing power to the people in the company. And so, but then you needed to, so everybody, nobody paid attention to security because then you were inside of the enterprise, so start inside the walls of the castle if you prefer. So nobody paid attention to that and it was more complex because now you have multiple actors instead of having one IBM or one digital equipment, etc. suddenly you have the people manufacturing the servers, the software, the database, the PCs, and on and on. So suddenly there was the complexity increased significantly. But nobody paid attention to security because it was not needed until suddenly we realized that viruses could come in through the front door, being installed, and now suddenly you were absolutely, absolutely compromised. And of course, that's the era of the antivirus, which came in. And then, because of the need to communicate more and more, now suddenly you could not stay only in your castle, you need to go and communicate to your customers, to your suppliers, etc., etc. And now you were starting to open up your, your castle to the world. And hello, 
So now suddenly the bad guy could come in and start to steal your information. And that was the new era of the far wall. Now you make sure that those who come in, but of course that was a little bit uh, naive because there were so many other doors and windows uh, that people could come in, you know, create tunnels and create this and all of that to enter into your castle because the data was becoming more and more rich and more and more important, so more value. So whenever there is value, of course, the bad guys are coming in to try to steal it. And that was that new era of, A, we need to pay attention to security. The problem has been is because you have so many different actors, there was nothing really s central there. Now you suddenly had more and more solutions and now at absolutely like 800 vendors bolting on security. Right, right. And bolting on anything is short-lived at the end of the day because you, you, you put more and more weight. And then you also increase the complexity and all these different solutions, you need, they need to talk together. So you have a better context. Uh, but they were not designed to talk together. So now you need to put other system where they could communicate that information. So you complicate and complicate and complicate the solution. And that's the problem of today. So now cloud computing comes in. And again, if you look at the architecture of cloud computing, it's again data centers, which now today have become, thanks to the technology, uh, having infinite almost computing power and storage capabilities. And like the previous data center, they are much more fractal because you just want scale and they become essentially a little bit easier to secure. And by the way, it's, you have fewer vendors now doing that. And then of course, the access can be controlled better. Uh, and then of course, the second component is not the land and the one, it's now the internet. And the internet, of course, uh, is the way of communication. It's extremely cheap and it brings you in every place uh, on the planet and right. soon in Mars. Why not? So, and so now the issue today is that still the internet needs to be secure. And today, how are you going to secure the internet? Which is a very important thing today. Because you see today that you can spoof your email, you can spoof your website, uh, you can attack the DNS, spook the DNS. There's a lot of things that the bad guys still do. And in fact, themselves, they leverage the internet, of course, to access everywhere. So they take advantage of it. Yeah. So now this is obviously, you know, I created the, the trustworthy uh, movement many years ago to try to really address that. Unfortunately, Qualys was too small and it was not really our place. Today, there's all the Google, the, the, the Facebook, the big guys, which in fact, their business depend on the internet now need to do that. And I applaud, albeit they've been criticized very much. So Google was the first one to essentially have a big initiative which trying to push SSL, uh, which everybody understands is secure uh, encryption, if you prefer, and to everybody. So they did a fantastic job. They really push it. So now today SSL is becoming like, okay, SSL, you want to have SSL on your communication, but that's not enough. And now they are pushing and some people criticize them and I absolutely applaud them to say, we need to change the internet protocols, which were created at a time when security, you were transferring information from universities and so forth. These were the heydays, you know, of everything was fine. There's no bad guys, you know, the hippie days, if you like, of right. the internet. Everybody was free, everybody was open, uh, fantastic, okay? And now, of course, today, this protocol needs to be upgraded, which is a lot of work. But today, I really believe that if you put Google, Amazon, Facebook all together, and I mean, come, they can fix this internet protocol so we could forget about the spoofing and we forget about all this uh, phishing and all these things. Right. But this is their uh, responsibility. So, and then you have now on the other side, you have now very intelligent devices from, you know, very s s simple sensors, and you know, to sophisticated devices, the, the, the phone, etc., and the more and more and more devices interconnected. And for people to understand what is going, so this is the new environment. And what I will always believe is that if you adapt an architecture which is exactly, which fits, which is similar, then we could, instead of bolting security in, we can now certainly build security in, uh, bolting security on, we could build security in. Yeah. And we have been very proud of the work that we have done with Microsoft, which we announced, in fact, relatively recently, very recently, that in fact our agent technology is now is bundled in Microsoft. So we have built security with Microsoft in. 
So from a security perspective today, if you go to the Microsoft Azure Security Center, you click on a link, and now you have the view of your entire Azure environment, courtesy of a quality agent. You click on a second link, and now you have the view of your security compliance posture, courtesy of that same quality agent. And then you click on the third link, which has nothing to do with quality, it's all Microsoft. You create your playbook and you remediate. So security in this environment has become click, 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 nothing to install, nothing to update. And the only thing you bring are your policies, saying, I don't want to have this kind of ma machine exposed on the internet, I want this, this is what I want. And you can continuously audit, in essentially, in real time. Right. So as you can see, totally different than putting boxes and boxes and so many things and then having to for you to, so very big game changer. So the analogy that I want to, that I give to people, it's so people understand that paradigm shift. It's already happening in the way we secure our homes. You put sensors everywhere, you have cameras, you have detection, uh, proximity detection. Uh, essentially, when somebody tries to enter your home, all that data is continuously pumped up into an incident response system. And then from your phone, again, across the internet, you can change the temperature of your rooms, you can, do, you can see the person who knocks on the door, you can see its face, you can open the door, close the door, the garage door, you can do all of that remotely and automatically. And then if there's a burglar, uh, then in your house, you try to break in immediately the, the, the incident response system call the cops or the fire marshal if you got fire. And that's the new paradigm. So security has to follow that paradigm. And then you have interesting enough the problem today that we see with all the current security uh, systems, uh, incident response systems, they have a lot of false positive. False positive and false negative are the enemy really of security because if you have false positive, you cannot automate the response. Because then you are going to try to respond to something that is not true. So you, are, you could create a lot of damage. And the example I give you that, today, in the, if you leave your dog in your house, and if you don't have the ability, the dog will bark, will move, and then the sensors will say, intruder alert. So that becomes a false positive. So how do you eliminate that? By having more context, you can eliminate automatically again these false positives. Like now you take a fingerprint of your dog and of its voice, and now the camera and the, and, and, and the sensors uh, and the, the, the voice can pick up and say, oh, this is my dog. So then of course you eliminate that false alert. Right, right. Now if, an, if another dog managed to enter your home through a window which was open or whatever, First of all, you will know a window was open, but you know you cannot necessarily fix it, and the dog opens, then you will know it's, a, it's, a, it's not your dog. Right. So that's what security is evolving. So it's a huge sea of change which is happening because of all that internet. And today, companies today have to leverage this new cloud technology, which are coming, there's so much new technology. What people don't understand is where's that technology coming from? How come suddenly we have you know, Dockers, Kubernetes, all these solutions today which are available at almost no cost because it's all open source. So what happened is that, which is unlike the enterprise software which were more the uh, Oracle, etc., the manufacturer of that software, today it's in fact the cloud, public cloud vendors, the Amazon, the Google, the Facebook, the Microsoft, which suddenly needed to have to develop new technology so they could scale at the size of the planet. And then very shrewdly realize that if I keep that technology for me, I'm essentially going to imprison that technology. It's not going to evolve. And then I need other technologies that I'm not developing. So they realized that they totally changed that open source movement, which in the early days of open source was more controlled by people who had more purity, if you prefer, no commercial interest. It was all for the good of the civilization and humankind. And they say uh, their licensing model was very complex, so they simplified all of that. And then now suddenly you had all this technology coming at you extremely fast. And we have leveraged that technology, uh, which was not existing in the early days when, the, when, when Salesforce.com started, where the Linux, the LAMP protocol was called, right, Linux, right. Apache, MySQL, and PHP. A little bit limiting, but now certainly all this technology like Elasticsearch, 
was coming. We indexed today in our backend three trillion data points on our Elasticsearch clusters and we return information in 100 milliseconds. And then on the Kafka bus, which is again something at open source, we, we, we vehicle now today five million messages a day and on and on and on. So the world is changing and of course, if that's what is called now the digital transformation. So now enterprises to be essentially agile, to reach out to their customers better and more, they need to embrace the cloud as well. Right, right. Do retool their entire IT infrastructure and essentially it's a huge sea of change. And that's what we see even the market of security, just to finish, uh, now evolving in a totally different ways than the way it has been, which in the past the market of security was essentially the market for the enterprise. And I'm bringing you my, my bold the, you know, my bolt on solutions that you have to go and install and make work. Right. And then you had the, the antivirus essentially uh, for all the consumers and so forth. So today what we see is a marketplace which is fragmenting in four different segments, which is one is the large enterprise, which are going to essentially consolidate their stack, move into the transformation, leveraging absolutely DevOps, which is becoming the new buyer and of course uh, so they could improve uh, you know their it to, for to reach out to more customers and more effectively then the cloud providers as i mentioned earlier which are building security in so now if you use them you don't have to worry about infrastructure about how many servers you need how many of these it's all done for you and same thing about security right the third market is going to be a new, an emergence of a new generation of managed security service providers which are going to take to all these companies who don't have enough resources, okay, don't worry, I'm going to help you, you know, do all that digital transformation and, and help you build the security. And then there's a totally new market of all these devices, including the phone, etc., which connects and that you essentially want to all these like OT and IoT devices that are all now connected, which of course present security risk. So you need to also secure them, but you also need to be able to also not only uh, check their health to make sure that, okay, because you cannot send people anymore, so you need to automate the same thing on security. If you find that that phone is compromised, you need to make, to be able to make immediate decisions about, should I kill that phone? Right, right. Destroy everything in it. Should I now, don't let that phone connect anymore to my network, Sh what should I do? Should I, by the way, detect that they have downloaded applications which are not allowed because what we see is more and more companies now are giving tablets to their users. And in doing so, now today's the company property. So they could say, okay, this, you use these tablets and uh, you're not allowed to do this. So you could check all of that and then automatically right. remote. But that again requires a full visibility on what you have. And that's why, just to finish, we make a big decision about a few, three months ago that we, have, we build the ability for any company on the planet to automatically build their entire global IT asset inventory, which nobody knows what they have in that old networking environment. You don't know what connects. To have the view of the known and the unknown, totally free of charge. Uh, across on-premise, endpoint, cloud, containers, uh, 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 web applications, uh, OT and IoT devices to come. So now that's the cornerstone of security. So with that, totally free. So, and then of course we have all these additional solutions and we have built a very scalable uh, open platform where we can take data in, pass our data as well. So we really need to be and want to be good citizen here because security at the end of the day, it's almost like uh, we used to say like the doctors, you have to have that kind of hypocrite uh, oath right. that you cannot do no harm. So if you keep, if you try to take the data that you have, keep it with you, that's absolutely not right because it's the data of your customers. Right. So, and you have to make sure that it's there. So you have to be a good guardian of that data, but you have to make sure that the customer can absolutely take that data and do whatever he wants right. uh, with it, whatever he needs to do. So that's the kind of a totally new philosophy. And finally, today there is a new as cultural change, which is, which is happening now f in, in the companies is that security has become front and center. It's becoming now because of GDPR, which has a huge uh, financial, could have a huge financial impact on a company. A data breach can have a huge financial impact. Security has become a board level more and more. 
So security is changing, and now it's almost like companies, if they want to be successful in the future, they need to embrace a culture of security. And now, what I used to say, and that was the, the, my, the, the conclusion of my talk, is that now today, IT, DevOps, uh, security, compliance people need to unite, not anymore the silos. I do that, um, this is my, my turf, my servers, you do that, you do this. Everybody in the company can work. They have to work together toward that goal. And the vendors need to also start to interoperate as well and working with our customers. So it's a total new mindset which is happening. But the stakes are big, and that's what I'm very confident right. that we have now entered that finally, we thought, I thought it would have happened 10 years ago, quite <laughs> frankly. <laughs> and, uh, but now today it's really happening. Right, so, so you touched on a lot. Uh, yes, absolutely. A, a lot so. there. And um, I can speak for another two hours if you like. Yeah, so. we, could, we could go for <laughs> two hours. But I want to I unpack a couple of things. Yeah, um, sure. We've had James Hamilton on, he used to be at AWS, um, yeah. CTO, super smart guy. Mm, and yeah, it, was, it was at one of his <laughs> talks where it really, was kind of a, a splash of wet mm -hmm. water in the face when he yeah. talked about the amount of resources Amazon could de deploy to just networking, or the amount of PhD power he could put on, you know, any little tiny sub-segment of their infrastructure yeah. platform, yeah. where you just realize that you just can't, you can't compete, you cannot put those kind of resources as an individual company in any bucket. So the right. inevitability of the cloud model is just, it, it's, it's the only way to leverage those resources. But because of yeah. that, how has how is that helped you guys change your market? How nice is it for you to be able to leverage infrastructure partners like Azure, both for go-to-market as well as feature sets and also, you know, because the other piece they didn't talk about is the integration of all these things. Now, yes. they all work together, most apps are a collection of APIs. Mm -hmm. um, that's also changed. So. When you look at the cloud Correct. provider, GCP as well, how does that help you deliver value to your customers? Yeah, but they, 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 the cloud, they, they don't do everything. You know, today what is interesting is that the clouds would start to specialize themselves more and more. So for example, if you look at Amazon, the, the, the core value of Amazon since the beginning has been elastic computing. Uh, now today, if you look at Microsoft, they leverage their position and they really have come up with a more enterprise-friendly solutions. And now Google is trying to find also their way today. And so then you have Alibaba, etc. So these are the public cloud. But life is not uniform. Life is by nature diverse. Life wants to live, wants to find better ways. We see that that's why we have so many different species and adjust and adapt. So you have also the other phenomena of companies also building their own cloud as well. So the world is entering into a more hybrid cloud and the technology is evolving very fast as well. And again, I was telling you uh, all these uh, open source software, there is a bigger phenomena at play, which I used to say, that people don't really understand that much, which, but it's so obvious is if you look at the printing press, that's another example that I give. The printing press essentially allowed, as we all know, to distribute the gospel, which has some advantage of you know, creating more morality, etc. But then what people don't know for the most part, it distributed the treaties of the Arabs on technology, on the scientific treaties, because the Arabs, which were a very thriving civilization at the time, had collected all the, inf all, the, all the information from India, from many other places, and from China, and from etc. And essentially at the time of Europe was pretty in the dark age, they really came up and it now suddenly that scientific knowledge was distributed. And that was in fact the seeds of the Industrial Revolution, which then Europe got caught and right. used that, right. and creating all these different technologies. So that confluence of of the steam engine, of electricity, and all of that created the industrial revolution, seeded by. Now today what is happening is that the internet is the new printing press, right. which now is distributing the knowledge, but not to a few millions of people, to billions of people. Right. So the rate today of advance in technology is accelerating. And it's very difficult, I, I was mentioning today, we know today that, we're okay, we're going to get some uh, quantum computing, which are going to totally change things. Of course, we don't know exactly how. And you have also, it's clear that today we could use genetic, uh, the low, the, 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 if you look at DNA, which stores so much information in so little place, that we could have significantly more, you know, 
memory capabilities at the lower cost. So we have embarked into absolutely a new world where things are changing. I've got a little girl which is 12 years old. And fundamentally, that new generation, especially of girls, not boys, because the boys are still are, you know, at that age, uh, they are very studious. They absorb so much information via YouTube, via things like uh, Security Stream. They are so knowledgeable. And when you look back at history, 2,000 years plus ago in Greece, you had 95 plus percent of the population slaves, so a few percent could start to think. Now today, it's totally changed. Right. And the, the amount of information they can they learn, and it's absolutely amazing. And, you know, she, 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 uh, I will tell you a, 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 a little story, which has nothing to do with computing, but it's about the knowledge. So she came to me a few, uh, few weeks ago and she said, oh, daddy, I would like to make my mother more productive. <laughs> okay? So I said, oh, that her name is Evia, which is the, which is the, the, <coughs> the island in Greece where Zeus uh, wedded Hera. And she said, Evia, so that's a good idea. So how are you going to do it? I mean, her answer, I was floored. Well, that is very simple. Just like with for me, I'm going to ask her to go to YouTube. <laughs> to learn what she needs to learn. Exactly. Help her out. <laughs> and great. she learns, she draws very well. She learns how to draw in YouTube. And it's not a, a gifted, uh, she, she's a nice, very nice little girl and very smart, but all her friends are like that. Right, right. So we're entering in a world which things are changing very, right. very fast. So the key is adaptation, education. And democratization. And so I mean, and the, the, piece, the piece that you're talking about is democratization, right? giving more people access to more absolutely. data and the tools it's to do something about very it. very, important. And then kind of this whole DevOps way so of thinking, which is you know, continuous improvement, not big bang theory. That's a very good point that you make because that's exactly today the new buyer today in security and in IT is becoming the DevOps people because what, what are these people? They are engineers which suddenly create good code and then they want to of course ship their code. And then all these old silos, oh you need to do this, oh no we need to put the new server, we don't have the capacity, etc. How long is it going to take? Three months, four months? And then we need, and your are so finally right. They find a way through again, you know, all the need for scale, which was coming from the Google, from the Facebook, and so forth. Oh, but by the way, we can shortcut all of that, and we can create, and we can learn how to uh, how to ship our code. Guess what are they doing today? They are learning how to secure all of that. Right. So again, it's that ability to really learn and move. And today, uh, one of the problems that you alluded to is that which the Amazon was saying is that. They, are pick, they, are, they have taken a lot of the, the talent resources in the U.S. today because, of course, and they pay them extremely well, of course, to attract that talent. And, of course, there is now, people say in security there is not enough people and even in, 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 in IT. But guess what? We realized that a few years ago, in 2007, we make a big decision. We say we're never going to be able to attract the right people in the Silicon Valley. And we decided to go to India. And we have now 750 people. And Jack Welch used to say, we went to India for the cost and discover the talent. We went to India for the talent and we discover the cost. <laughs> right. And there is a huge pool of talent. So it's like, hey, life wants to continue to live. And now today, all these tools to learn are there. Look at the Khan Academy, which today, y if you want to learn nuclear physics, you can do that you right. know, th 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 right. through your phone. So. That ability to learn is there, so I think we need to, st and that more and more people are coming. Right. So I'm a very optimistic in a way, because I think the more we improve our technologies, and we look at the progress we're making genetics and so everywhere, and that confluence of technology yeah. is, is really creating a new world. Right, you know, there's a lot of conversations about a dystopian future and a utopian future, mm -hmm. uh, with all these technologies and the machines and you know what Hollywood has shown us with AI. You're very utopian yeah. side, very optimistic on that equation. What gives you, what gives you, you know, kind of that positive feeling and security, which traditionally a lot of people would say is just whack a mole, and we're always trying to but chase the bad it's guys. It's more generally speaking, if you, I'm, a, I'm a utopian in, in a way, but on the other hand, you need to realize that unfortunately, when you have technological changes and so forth, it's also create factors. And when you look at the history of humanity, the same technological advancement allowed some countries to take to try to take advantage of others. So it's not that the world is everything fine and everything peaceful. In fact, 
Richard Clark was really in the, in the keynote was saying that, hey, you know, there, there's, uh, there is a, a sinister side to all the internet and so forth, but that's the human evolution. So I believe that we are getting long term, it's going to, so in the meantime, there's a lot of changes and humans don't adapt well to changes. No. And so th that's in a way, uh, the big challenge we have. But I think over time, we can create a culture of change and that will really help. And I also believe that probably at some point in time, we will re-engineer the human race. All right, well, and so cool. we'll leave it there because yeah, so that's so going to launch a whole nother couple yeah. hours. Absolutely. Philippe, congratulations yeah, yeah, on the yeah. event and uh, great you. job on okay. your keynote. Thanks okay. for taking a few okay. minutes okay. with us. Oh, my great pleasure. All right, Thank he's Philippe. I'm Jeff. You're watching theCUBE. We're at the Qualys Security Conference at the Bellagio in Las Vegas. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.